Welcome. We're glad that you're with us today. Turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews. We're going through uh, the 11th chapter of Hebrews, that chapter of faith. It's often been called the uh, God's Hall of Fame of Faith, uh, the hero chapter. And uh, as we're looking at uh, the different ones that are there, today we come upon Enoch. And we're told that Enoch uh, walked with God. We're told that by faith, Enoch walked with God. And, and when we think about this man, Enoch, there are about seven different verses in Scripture. Eight, if you count one in Chronicles, where his name is simply mentioned. But in Genesis, we're told he walked with God. In Hebrews 11, we're told that he pleased God. And then in the book of Jude, we're told that he served God and uh, as a preacher of righteousness. So as we think about that pattern, uh, walking with God and having a walk with God, an intimate walk with God that pleases God, and then out of that walk uh, and the pleasure that comes to the heart of God from walking with him, that you're able to serve him and you're able to tell others about him. And that's really what we see in the pattern in the life of Enoch. But I want to read, starting at verse 5, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5, we read there that by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And he was not because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to, to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have these two verses here in Hebrews. And then if we turn back to the book of Genesis in chapter 5, we read this, that Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked, Enoch walked with God three hundred years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And so we have those two passages that Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And then Enoch was taken away and that he was he was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, I want to suggest to us as, for our consideration as we look at this man, Enoch, that there's three things that we can consider. As we consider the fact that, uh, that Enoch, as a man of faith, that faith lives for another world. Enoch lived for another world. And secondly, faith uh, it lives with an internal assurance that we find in verse 5 of chapter 11. And then thirdly, that faith lived for God's pleasure. Those three things are so important as we see this. Now, when we think about Enoch, Enoch is only one of, two, is one of two people who it is said that he walked with God. Of course, the other was Noah. Uh, but Enoch walked with God for 300 years. That expression, walking with God, it intimates intimacy. It has the idea of fellowship. It has the idea of fellowship and friendship, walking with God, communing with God. And he's a model of faith, and he's a model of steadfastness. Enoch walked with God during what was leading up to be a wicked period of time. But we're told that he walked with God. Twice it says that he walked with God. And when we consider that, uh, how can two walk together lest they be, be agreed, the book of Amos says. And so they were headed the right, the same direction. He was headed the, the, the direction that God was headed, and they were walking together. Little girl in Sunday school one day, she, when they, they um, Sunday school teacher was talking about this portion. She says, oh, I get it. Uh, she, she went on to say that they were 
so close that Enoch and God were out walking together and and God said, Enoch, why don't you come home with me? You're closer to my home than to your home. And God took him and he was not anymore because God took him. Now, that was that little girl's impression. But what does this idea of being taken mean? It means that, that he was transferred. He was changed. He went from one side to the other. He was carried across. That's the actual word. In fact, in another translation, it says he was translated. Uh, he was not found because God took him up. And when we think about that, God could take him because God could enjoy fellowship with this man. That by faith, this man walked with God. And he had this sweet fellowship with God. And he was living for, to, for the time when he would be with God. That was the world that he was living for. In fact, we read in the book of Jude, in verses 14 and 15, that Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. In the wicked day that he lived in, he was telling people how to be right with God. And it was a personal um, uh, his preaching was very personal because uh, it says that he addressed God as the Lord. It was universal because he told, he told them about the judgment that was going to fall upon them. It was a universal judgment. And he also mentioned this manner that it was a just judgment. And when we look there in verse 15 of Jude, and, and when we consider these things, uh, he gives us there in the book of Jude, it tells us because of their works and because of their words that they would have been judged. And so Enoch wasn't living for that world that was going to be judged. Enoch was living for another world. And it's a good reminder for us that you and I don't belong to this world. We belong to another world. We set our affection on things above uh, where Christ is seated. That's the world that we belong to. But secondly, I want us to see that here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, that Enoch had this internal assurance. Now, look at that. He says that uh, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and he was not because God had taken him. For before, and this is the assurance, for before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, somehow God had related to him, whether God told him personally or whatever it might have been, he had this testimony that his life pleased God. What a tremendous thing. He obtained this witness. He had this testimony. The, another translation says, before his translation, he has this testimony that he pleased God. And if we look in verse 4, back up in verse 4, uh, we might get an indication as to who gave him this. Because it says there in verse 4, by faith that Abel, speaking of Abel, he offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained a witness that he was righteousness, God testifying of his gifts, though he being dead still speaks. So it might suggest to us that it was God who told Enoch that his life was pleasing to him. And so when we think about this, uh, how wonderful to be reminded here that uh, this gives full assurance. And you know, for us today, as we're living for another world, as our hope is anchored in heaven, that it's secure in Christ, and, and that's where we're being pulled toward. Uh, this gives us full assurance of faith. As the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 22, will remind us that we have full assurance of faith. In 1 John chapter 5, uh, in verse 13, maybe I'll just read that verse. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, he says, These things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son. How good to know that we have eternal life, that full assurance of faith. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 24, he says, Now he who abides in his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know 
that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given. You see, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And that Holy Spirit, it says, having believed, you're sealed with the spirit who is the guarantee until the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And because we have the Spirit of God, it gives us that full assurance. It gives us that confidence in our God. Look at chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. And we have seen and testified that the Father sent the Son as the Savior of the world. And verse 13 says, By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. How wonderful to have the Holy Spirit living and indwelling inside of us. And we know that each one of us have the spirit of God who've put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We can have this full internal assurance because of it. So number one, Enoch lived for another world. Number two, Enoch had this eternal, internal uh, assurance. So faith lives for another world, and faith lives with an internal assurance. And then lastly, faith lives for the pleasure of God. We read here in our verse, in verse 6, But without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. Do you want to please God? The Apostle Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, that we make it our aim to please him. In 2, in, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Apostle Paul said that no one who's been enlisted into service entangles himself with the affairs of this world, but his aim is to please him who enlisted him. And that's our desire that we would live a life as believers today to please the Lord. And so we have this faith lives for the pleasure of God. You know, an acronym for faith is what we've been using here in, in these lessons is F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, I trust him. Forsaking all, I trust him. You see, faith is not passive and it's not just uh, uh, doing nothing, but it, it's not checking our intellect at the door where, where we don't. No, faith is coming to God on his terms. It is believing in him, in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is accepting what God's word says, that I am a sinner and that I need a savior. That's what faith is. And, and I would just encourage you, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you've never put your faith, put your full weight. When I came into my office tonight, I set my full weight on this chair. And that's what faith is, putting your full confidence and full weight in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And dear friend, if, you're, if you are a Christian, if you are walking for the Lord, living day by day, and you have difficulties that come up in your way, the storms of life roll in, well, I want to encourage you, put your full weight in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him day by day. And we're told that Enoch walked with God, have fellowship, have intimate relationship with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Meet daily with him in his word. Listen to his word. Follow his word. Obey his word. And then commune with him as friend with friend. Walk together and walk the same direction. And it will be that in a coming day very, very soon, we will be no more because he will take us home to be with himself. Enoch is a beautiful picture of what you and I have to look forward to in the rapture, that one day soon the Lord Jesus is going to come and take us all to be with, his, with himself. Until that day, may you walk by faith. May you walk with God. May your walk please God. And may you serve the living God as Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. The Lord bless you. Continue on in faith.